Hey guys, what's up? Alec Trelli here. Welcome to Conscious Poker, the YouTube to help you take your game to the next level. Today we are doing a vlog about my session at The Hustler. We are playing 25, 50, 100 with a 100 straddle, but it's also a format called Win the Button. So it's really interesting because every time you win a pot, you get the button the very next hand. So it creates all these sort of weird, interesting incentive dynamics, especially like, let's be honest, if you're in the third blind and the guy on the button's very aggressive, it's a very bad spot for you because he raises, wins the button, then the next hand he has the button again and you have to pay the blind. So it creates all these sort of interesting dynamics. It's our first time doing this at The Hustler and I'm excited to dive into the hands with you. Also, a couple things here while you're here. If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Alec Torelli. I am a professional poker player and coach. Published a book called The Poker Coach as well. And we have a ton of awesome content on this YouTube. Be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Awesome content drops here regularly. And head over to ConsciousPoker.com. Download our free newsletter. Uh, it, you'll get access to poker tips, strategies, new contents, hand breakdowns, and a chance to buy a piece of me in these games on The Hustler. I'm selling around 10% of myself in these games at no markup as a thank you to my most loyal fans and subscribers exclusively at ConsciousPoker.com. What else? I am active on Twitter and Instagram at Alec Torelli. That's my only official account, beware of scammers, but I do post regular content there to help you take your poker game to the next level. So follow me on social, DM me as well. I'm happy to help you guys on your journey. So uh, check that out as well. And that's it. I'm excited for this session. Let's dive in. Bringing you this from my treadmill. I love walking on this thing. I do all my coaching calls here. Anyway, I am up about 20,000 at this point. We're an hour and a half into the session. So I made some good hands, made some good calls, made some good moves. Again, I only have time for five hands in this video. So definitely encourage you to watch the whole session if you want more content. But this hand kicks off with Mars, making it 300 under the gun with tens. Suited Spider-Man calls to his left with jacks. A little bit tricky here, not going for the three bet. Henry calls on the button with jack eight. And I am in the middle blind with ace king offsuit. I go ahead and make a large re-raise to 3,000. And I feel like in this spot, you really need to make it a big size here. I think people, what I see clients and students doing that is, I believe, incorrect, is they go too small in spots like these. So they make a re-raise to like 1,000, and then it just goes call, call, call. And people know you have a really strong hand, and you're out of position. You're not really forcing your opponents to fold preflop, but you're giving away information about the strength of your hand. So it really doesn't suit that well. What I think is a lot better to do is to raise a lot bigger, just like you would do if you were on a complete steal. If I had a complete bluff, I'm going to make a big raise here, try and just win all this dead money in the pot. So it's also good to do that with really strong hands, like Ace King, puts people in a really tough spot, makes them play defense right away. So over to Mars, he opts to flat call here and suited Spider-Man behind with kind of a short stack, like 20K. Um, you know, there's a re-raise from me who could be bluffing, Mars calls, so Mars probably doesn't have like aces. He just called. He didn't. He didn't re-raise me back. He didn't make it like seven or eight or nine k, which he probably would do if we had aces. Where he's aces or kings, he's really deep. So I don't blame Spider Man for the jam here. I mean, it's a uh, it's a good spot for him. He could be ahead of some of the hands that I have. Definitely ahead of the hands Mars has. And if I fold and Mars calls with tens, like he's in a great spot. So um, pretty reasonable jam here. Um, I have a very clear call as well when. Spider-Man flats behind Mars's original open and then back jams. I have a very clear jam. Maybe he has ace queen. Maybe he has Jackson. I'm flipping, but there's so much dead money in the pot. Definitely can't be folding ace king here. So I stick it in as well, forcing Mars to fold out his hand. I don't want to call and then have Mars over call behind me uh, with another hand like tens. Um, it's probably just better for me to jam. Hopefully Spider-Man has ace queen. But anyway, we get it all in. We opt to run it twice, and here's what happens. Open. Yeah, yeah. Open. You guys open. Open. Got it. Open. Yeah. 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 All right, let's go. Okay. I need to win the first. Okay. Hold. Oh no. Hold. So far, so good for Superman. Oh no. Can he double up here? Hold. I think it's coming. Needs to fade an ace or a king on the river to at least get half the pot. Dude. Oh, oh hello, ace of clubs on the river. Ace of the river has not been kind to suited Superman. <laughs> This next hand, pretty sick. I'm up a decent amount at this point in the session, and we have a raise from Mars under the gun to 300. Brown Bala, three bets, 
to 1100 with ace king in the hijack over to me in the big blind and i come out firing against two people out of position. I like my hand as a re-raise here. I think it plays a lot better with the lead. I make it 3,600, forcing Mars to get out of the way. Brown Bala calls with his ace king, very reasonable. And we go heads up to the flop, which comes ace, jack, four with two diamonds. Great flop for me. Pot is about 8K. And on this flop, out of position, I'm gonna be leading uh, with most of my hands here that re-raised pre. Maybe I'm gonna be betting some queens, some kings. Maybe I have ace, x, suited as a bluff like ace five maybe ace ten or something ace queen ace king maybe i have a set of aces set of jacks and some bluffs maybe i have like you know king queen suited or something like that so all of those hands are going to want to bet most of those hands are going to want to bet so to balance that out i use a small sizing which allows me to bet with more hands in this spot profitably and it keeps me harder to play against so i make it 2000 really inducing uh, a raise here brown bala takes the bait of course he has ace king which is a, which is a good hand so it's reasonable to do with this holding he makes it 5000 and it's over to me here and at this point i think if i re-raise back on the flop if i put in a third bet it looks very strong here it looks like i have you know maybe aces or ace king or something like that i feel like in this spot he might raise me with a worse ace he might fold that hand like maybe he has ace 10 or ace queen kind of finding out where he's at or you know denying me the chance to see the turn maybe he's raising with some sorts of draws and i think i don't want to scare those hands away but also most importantly we play a lot of poker together and i think a lot of the times if you look at all the types of hands i can have a lot of the hands i have facing a raise on this flop are going to want to just call the flop so to balance that out and not give away the strength of my hand i protect the types of hands I could have by just calling here with a set of jacks. It makes me a lot harder to play against when I'm trapping here with sets and I don't only have weak hands like a weak ace or kings or queens. So I flat the flop and we take a turn. The turn comes down a five, a complete brick. I check again, just like I would with all of my holdings and pot of 18K, Brown Bala now bets 6,000. At this point, he has um, not a ton behind. And I think here, if he has some sort of pair plus draw, or he has a very strong ace, which is the types of hands he's representing, he's probably not going to fold to a jam because the pot is very big, and I could potentially be bluffing with maybe like a like a flush draw or a gut shot and a flush draw or a pair and a flush draw or something like that. So I don't think he's going to fold. I read him for quite a strong hand. I ship it in. He snaps me off, and <laughs> it doesn't matter if we run it twice because he's drawing dead in this one, and I scoop myself a nice pot. This hand, pretty sick. All right, so we're kicking this one off. It's folded around to me on the button, and I make it $300. Airball calls in the small blind, and Brown Bala defends in the straddle, and the flop comes down 10 for four rainbow. The pot is about 1100. It's checked over to me, and this is a key integral point in the hand. You can even hear the commentator making a point about this as well. I go ahead and bet 400, which is a very small bet. It looks kind of fishy. It looks like I have nothing, and it's important that to keep these bet sizes balanced. And this is something I always uh, instill in my clients, my private coaching sessions. It's like really important to play both types of your range in the strong way. So play your strong hands the same way that you play your weak hands so people cannot figure out exactly where you're at. This confuses your opponents because it makes your strong hands look weak, your weak hands look strong. They really don't know where you're at and makes you a lot harder to play against. So in this spot, I opt for a $400 bet just like I would if I was bluffing. And Airball takes the bait. This is a board where he's going to attack here. He feels like I'm probably weak. I probably don't have that many fours. And if I have air, I'm going to fold. So it's a very reasonable raise by him. He actually has a good hand to do it with as well. He has a backdoor straight draw and a backdoor flush draw. And of course, if I have, you know, King Jack, I'm probably just going to fold or, you know, seven, eight or whatever it is. So he takes the bait. Uh, I, of course, call with tens full. I want to keep his bluffs in the pot, most importantly. And if he has a four, I'm really not that worried because if he has a four and I just call, he's going to continue betting the turn in the river. So I'm going to get value from his bluffs regardless if I just call. But most importantly, I get value from his air. If I raise back here on the flop, all of his air folds and I miss value from all of his bluffs. That's a key point in the hand here. So the turn comes down an ace, which is an interesting card because a lot of types of hands I have are now a little bit vulnerable. If I had a 10, you know, ace is a scare card. It's a bad card. If I had pocket jacks, the ace is a bad card. So I understand Airball's bet again here on the turn. He comes out firing and he fires huge, 8,400. So at this point, he's basically saying, look, I have a really strong hand. I'm putting you to the test. Do you have something worth calling? So at this point, again, if he has a four and I call, he's gonna bet the river. He has trips. I'm not worried about it. But if he's bluffing, most importantly, a flat call induces him to bluff again by making my hand look weaker than it is. One key thing I always impart on clients, 
you want your hand to look the opposite of what it is. That's how you make money in poker. By calling, I make my range look a lot weaker. The river comes to six, pot is 20, 21K or so. And again, he continues telling the story. I have a super strong hand. I'm going to put you to the test. He's airball. He's a very tough player. He's willing to attack weakness. And I think that's a key point in the hand. It's important to know your opponent, important to know the player so you can make adjustments, optimize your strategy against that player. So he comes out firing. Of course, at this point, I have tens full. I have to jam. I stick it in. He folds his air quickly and I skew myself a nice pot. If you like the strategy I use to break down hands in a linear step-by-step -step order, you have to check out our CIPPS strategy. This is the exact strategy one of our students, Yugal D, used to win $87,000 at the WSOP. We've helped thousands of students take their game to the next level, increase their confidence, and move up in stakes, increase their win rate. I knew like 10% of poker before I joined academy and after six weeks i will say that my understanding grew from like 10 percent to like 60 to 70 percent check it all out at the link in the description below or you can click right up here and uh that's some awesome content for you guys we also have a free newsletter at consciouspoker.com enter your name and email receive our newsletter every week with poker tips and strategies to take your game to the next level you'll also have the chance to buy a piece of me in these games markup at all it's exclusive for subscribers at consciouspoker.com let's go back to the video all right so doing well crushing this session of about 80 or 90k at this point and i come out firing with the King four of diamonds. Remember, we are playing win the button. So it's super helpful to win more pots because you're more likely to be on the button. Incentivizes people to play a few more hands. I open with the king four suited. Airball calls in the small blind. And we go heads up to a flop of seven, five, three. The pot's at 1,100. I go ahead and bet 600 here, about half pot or so. Um, pretty standard C bet with my hand. Um, heads up in position. Not much, too much going on here. Uh, Airball, though, comes out with a check raise to 3,000. Me with a overcard, a backdoor flush draw, and a gut shot. Pretty clear call here in position at this point. We are very deep in this hand as well. So I go ahead and call, and the turn comes gin for me a six. Pot 7K, I have a straight, but it's a very disguised straight, right? I'm raising early position. It's very unlikely I have a four in my hand. There's just not that many fours that I can have. Maybe ace four, maybe king four, maybe four five pocket fours, but there's just not that many fours, right? At the same time, I am still concerned potentially about eight, nine. If he airball has eight, nine, he check raises the flop, he might uh, play this hand this way as well. So I have a super strong hand, but it's underrepresented, but at the same time, it's a little bit vulnerable. So a lot of depth to the hand going on here. Airball comes out firing and bets 5k. At this point, I think raising might have been the right move here because if he does have a set, I force him to call a big bet on the turn with a set. So I'm basically charging him to like draw to a boat, right? Or if he does have two pair with like 5 6 or 7 6, I am forcing him to draw. At the same time, I thought. And I think there's there's argument to both sides. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in a comment below. Let me know in a comment, how would you actually play this one? I'm always trying to learn and improve my strategy as well. So I think in this point, I was thinking to myself, well, yeah, I could raise the turn, but then I'm kind of like letting him know I have a straight, right? I'm kind of repping a straight. And so I thought like most of the time I have, you know, over pairs here on the turn or ace high or like a single pair type of hand, I'm going to want to just call the turn. So in order to protect the types of hands that I want to just call the turn with that are weak, I also want to call here with hands that are strong and sort of underrepresent my hand, kind of like I did in the hand before with the tens full. So anyway, I just call this turn and the river comes a complicated five pairing the board. At this point here, pot 17K, airball thinks for a second, counts out his chips and fires out 2X pot 34K. So at this point here, now I'm kind of like, wow, my hand was basically kind of nutted on the turn. But at this point, number one, the board paired. And number two, when he bets this big, I don't really beat that many hands that he's value betting that are worse than mine. Like maybe we're chopping with a four. Maybe, maybe he's value betting a four this big. But he's kind of telling the story like I have a boat. So did he really bet the turn with two pair or a set when there's a one card straight? Maybe. All these things are going through my mind. But at the same time, it is airball. And I did underplay my hand. I kind of made my hand look weaker than it is. So that kind of led me to the conclusion that I should probably call here. But thinking back about this hand, it's a spot where this is the type of opponent that you can call against. Most people here, when they bet this big on this type of texture, this type of run out, they just aren't bluffing. But it's airball. Airball could bluff. He just did it all with the jack nine. So I was like, oh my gosh, you know, what do I do? Anyway, I flick in the call unfortunately he shows me the full house and that sucks really sucks bad river maybe i could have folded 
Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment below. Uh, really unfortunate uh, turn of events in, the, in this hand for me. All right, wrapping up with the last hand of the night. This one really is sick. Um, we're playing the win the button game, of course, and Mars is on the button. But Mars had won like four or five hands in a row. So he's just like attacking every single button, just going for it, going for it, going for it, right? So his range of hands that he's raising here on the button is going to be extremely wide. Pretty much any two, right? So he raises to 400 on the button. I'm in the blind, the middle blind with 10 out of diamonds. So this is a normal like three bet, even if we're not playing win the button, but we're playing win the button. If I fold this hand, I'm going to be in the blind paying the blind the next time. And like Mars is opening any two. So I go ahead and raise to 3,000 uh, to 2,000, which I think is pretty standard. The straddle now, Ali G makes it uh, 6,000 with ace, king, uh, here, which is also standard from him, right? Mars now calls the 5,600. And so, I mean, yeah, sure, he could have some kings and aces that he's trapping with, but maybe he's playing a little looser here. Maybe he's calling a little bit too wide because he's on the button, right? Either way, I'm kind of sandwiched here. Like, I'm not in love with this spot, but I'm only calling 4K to win 14K. So it's just like a pot odds thing. Like, I'm getting a great price, and I'm closing the action, and I'm guaranteed to see the flop if I call. So given these odds, given that my hand is kind of deceptive, I opt to call. The flop comes down. At this point, it's over, right? I'm getting it in. It's just a matter of how. The flop comes 8-7-3 with two diamonds. I flop literally a straight flush draw. So I check, and my plan here was to just check raise. The pot is 18K, I have 40K. So my hand plays very well as a check raise. If someone bets 10K on the flop, I could jam 40. I still have some fold equity. And if I'm called, like I might be a favorite. Like I literally am a favorite against an overpair. So Ali G checks, Mars now bets a little bit bigger than I had hoped, but he bets 14K, which I was hoping he bet like 8K because then I could jam and it's like a lot more money for him to call. But he bets a little bit on the bigger side. Uh, and I have a very clear jam here. Like, what am I going to do? Call out of position and then, like, not see the river, like, check call the turn? I mean, it's just silly. So I really only have one decision. I kind of got to this point. Uh, I stick it in, and I'm really hoping that he folds. I'm really hoping he just has, like, ace-queen and folds or something, or maybe, like, you know, an eight and folds, or maybe, like, a low over pair, like, tens, and he's worried I have, like, jacks or queens or kings or something. Um, anyway, I stick it in. He actually tanks for a little bit here, so uh, he's not a great spot for him. I'm not really, I mean, maybe I have queens and I'm jamming, but uh, he definitely has to be worried I do have a set or I do have like a monster draw and he's literally still an underdog against his hand, but he is getting a great price. I think it is a very standard call with kings. We run it twice. I have to win one, right? I'm a favorite. I have a straight flush draw. Here's what happens. Good hand to go twice with. Let's go. <laughs> he has 900 diamonds for sure. If he had if he had low diamonds, he wouldn't want him to have diamonds. You have more than one pair out? Oh, no, you're you're, you're good. Diamonds. Oh, five, good, good. Show, him, show him your hand. You won the first game. Yeah, you, you win. Oh, sick. I had ace king. Ace king? Oh, right. I almost chopped him in a free flop. Oh, that's you. Unless you have six nine. Ninety nine thousand dollar pot. Yeah, that's why I said. Can really get there? I think he would have shown it. By you think so? Wow. Got skipped. Nice turn. Uh, we, we got Alex. Wow. Nice turn. <clears throat> oh, how do we miss twice? So brutal that hand uh, with the 10 9. It's one of those things where that really changed a lot of the course of the session. Like, I was up 80, 90K, and then, you know, that hand was 100K pot. And it's like, if I scoop, I end up being back to up 80K or whatever, and then I lose, and then whatever. So, this session, crazy result. I lost 47,450. Uh, roller coaster swing. That's why we got this uh, this session. I hope you took something away from this. I am playing on the Hustler more in the coming weeks. I also do the pregame show there as well, so be sure to check that out. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Alec Torelli. I post uh, regular content to help you take your poker game to the next level. Subscribe to this channel. Visit ConsciousPoker.com for more, and I'll see you guys in the next video.